Hello, very good morning. So today I'll be covering about anesthesia for cleft lip and palate. So this is a very common um, surgery we encounter among the plastic surgeons. And it's one of the commonest defects uh, we see. So uh, the incidence uh, varies across different uh, races. So how in Indians, it's, it's approximately 1.27 per thousand live births, the highest being in Americans. Uh, they could uh, occur as an isolated defect or as a part of syndrome. So 20 to 30 percent could have associated syndrome or systemic abnormalities, which has to be uh, looked into. Now, um, this is a common exam question uh, for postgraduate uh, post exams. So uh, it's something uh, which they would get regularly, regularly as a minor case. So, and embryology is something which is frequently asked. So, if you look at this picture, the phase develops from these three uh, processes. One is the, the frontal nasal process, the maxillary process, and the mandibular process. Okay. So, uh, the upper lip is basically a um, common site where, where we have a cleft lip. Upper lip is fused by a combination of the Medinasal process of the frontonasal process, which comes from the frontonasal process and from the maxillary process. So, whenever there is a defect in a fusion of these two, you get an upper lip cleft. On the other hand, a cleft palate. Cleft palate is basically, so this is a picture which if you, let's say you look into the mouth and you're looking into the palate, this is what you see. So, this is the anterior part and this is the posterior part. So, anteriorly you have the, what is called the pre-maxilla, okay, and then you have the hard palate, then you have the soft palate and the ovula. The anterior part of the palate is formed by fusion of the frontal nasal process, whereas the posterior part is fused by the, is formed by the fusion of the maxillary process. So, whenever there is uh, 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 inability to, for these processes to meet up in the midline or in the side, you could get a cleft palate. So there are a lot of syndromes which can uh, occur along with cleft lip palate. They have up to 400 syndromes reported. But the common things are, the most common is probably the Pierre-Robin syndrome. And the other sims, syndromes include Fischer colonies, hemifacial microsomia and so on. The important thing is whenever you see a child with cleft lip and palate, and if they look, they are, look like they are syndromic as well, it's important.